The cost of energy contributes to the cost of food. And the cost of energy also contributes to the bottom line of farmers. Farmers like John Zimmerman of Northfield, Minnesota. John is going to take us to his farm and show us how he's using energy efficiency practices to bring the cost of food down and make his farm more profitable. In that process, he brought in team members to evaluate the farm, do an energy audit, and give recommendations to John on how to make his farm more efficient and bring energy costs down. Let's listen in. John, thanks so much for having us. Thanks for coming. And what a nice farm. Tell us about it. Thank you. Uh, the Zimmerman family has been here since about 1870. My dad started raising turkeys about 1955 after he got out of the Navy. Uh, we're a mixed, mixed operation, both crops and turkeys. How many acres? Um, we farm roughly five to 600 acres. And turkeys are a large part of your operation? Turkeys are the majority of our operation. Um, we raise primarily females, hens, and we roughly raise between three and four million pounds a year. That's a lot, John, and I love turkey. Well, that's good. You need <laughs> to eat a little more. You're also president of the Minnesota Turkey Growers Association. Tell us about that role. That's correct. Um, Minnesota Turkey Growers Association is the state uh, checkoff organization, and um, been on the board for about six years, and uh, we rotate through the uh, executive committee, and this year I happen to be president. You spoke about the bottom line and making profitability, and that's part of the mission of the Minnesota Turkey Growers Association, but certainly as a farmer, you look at that every year, don't you? Oh, of course. You know, uh, we're, we're price takers. We, we take whatever price the market gives us, so we always have to be watching our bottom line, and anything we can do to um, you know, increase our efficiency is obviously welcome. So when a product comes along that says that we can do the same or better job for less money, we obviously take a good look at that. If a consumer like John wants to do some energy efficiency programming and rebates, do they approach you or GRE or both? Typically they come to us, we in turn use the guidelines that Great River Energy have drawn out for us, Jake in particular, um, for energy conservation on lighting or motors, uh, variable frequency drives, and kind of a combination of just a little bit of everything. We can, we can look at what it is that you're looking at installing and how much energy is it really going to save us. And if we don't have a program for it, maybe we can do a custom program and get you some, some rebate or grant money to help assist with the program because of the fact that we're going to be saving energy in the end. John's team eventually gave a recommendation that he needed to look at products to bring energy efficiency up and cost down on his farm. That recommendation eventually led us to a manufacturer that had some innovative products. And we're going to ask them to tell us about the products. Well, you brought some things in front of us. Can, can you tell us about it? Yes, yes. Let's, uh, let's take this. This is a standard 100 watt incandescent bulb, which is pretty standard throughout the uh, residential, industrial, uh, and also in the agricultural market. They use quite a few of them. This, this bulb here consumes 100 watts of uh, energy where we can replace that bulb with one of our bulbs which consumes 12 watts of energy. So we have about an 85% energy savings uh, when we're using our bulb versus that bulb in the same time frame that they use it. And what we've done is we've gone one step further and we've developed our products for the uh, agricultural market. Uh, primarily, the, uh, some of the older uh, fixtures have that standard Edison type base where you just screw the fixture right into the socket. And this would be our Edison base type socket. We've gone one step further and developed our lights uh, into a modular type system where we're, we have our base unit right here and we, can, we take this base unit and we can uh, modify it to, uh, we can put a hardwired fixture on it so we can hang it from the uh, ceiling. Or if you have a, uh, a conduit box in the barn, what we can do is we have this adapter that would fit right to the conduit box. And then in turn, we mount this light right to that conduit box in this fashion here. And this fixture, when it's uh, completely assembled, it has an IP66 rating, so it's designed for a wet environment. Uh, typically, an agricultural bar, our environment is very harsh, very dusty, and in many cases, they're power washing it in between flocks and so forth. So it's a retro product. Correct, yes. Probably saving a lot of time 
money and use of expensive professionals, perhaps? Not only that, but also the, uh, the lights are uh, designed for the life expectancy of these LED bulbs. There's a life expectancy of about 50,000 hours versus an incandescent bulb with the, which has a life expectancy of about 1,000 hours. So you, you don't uh, need that ladder and replacing bulbs all the time. You, and, it's, uh, and obviously the energy savings is there and the, uh, the product overall uh, designed for that harsh environment are all things that the uh, growers and the farmers are looking for. Earlier you had mentioned, Brian, a number of birds and the potential for this market. Can you expand on that just a little bit? Sure. You know, so again, those three markets are pretty big. Um, the, the poultry market in the United States is especially big along with the swine. But, and really, that's kind of what, what our goal is. Of course, we save energy um, because it's LED and LEDs run cooler and they're more energy efficient. They get, more easily get light on the ground. But part of the other technology that is important for the agriculture community, for guys like John, who really care about uh, their own productivity, not just energy savings, is creating uh, production enhancement. And that's really what our, our lights are tuned to uh, with specific color um, and amount of light and, this, and the photo period or how long it's on. As a farmer, you're looking at animal care, safety of the workers, and also efficiencies. So how does Shannon come into the part about efficiency and making your farm work better? Well, obviously, anything we can do to save money while still producing a wholesome and nutritious product is something that interests me. And in, ca in the case we're talking about today, changing our lights to LED have, uh, have resulted us in, from going from a 100-watt fixture down to a 15-watt fixture. And so you're getting a significant amount of energy savings there. In this barn alone, I save between $100 and $150 a month on my lighting bill. So anything we can do to do that to help my bottom line is, is very welcome. When you're dealing with uh, some sort of an audit of any type, whether you're doing an audit online yourself or you're having somebody come in to do it, it's best to, to do a walkthrough, even if you own the facility, and, and start counting how many fixtures, how many fans, what size, what do they actually draw, um, how long of runtime is huge, obviously, with every one of these pieces of equipment. But uh, in the end, take and section it out and draw a map out on paper and lay it out in front of you to actually get all the, the numbers up front so that way you, you have a better platform to, to start on. Well, earlier you two were talking about the, the bird itself, the biology of the bird and what it wants for light source and type. Can you, either of you expand on that? Well, turkeys are a little bit different than humans. They see light in a different way. Um, they actually have other glands in their head which see that light, but light to a turkey, um, as you know, that's how they start their reproductive cycle because that's why they lay their eggs in the spring when the day, get, day length gets longer. But it's very important to the turkey because that's how they regulate most of their bodily functions. Their circadian, circadian rhythms are all regulated based on their light intensity. So we can adjust the light intensity with these LED lights to make it darker or brighter and the different wavelengths, and that does influence the um, attitude of the flock. John, did you use the team and Shannon to set up priorities on what you did first as far as improvements? Well, I, I think it was a, kind of a no-brainer in the, in the part of the, the lighting was first because you look at the consumption of electricity in this barn, and like Shannon said, some of it is intermittent. Our lighting is our most constant demand of electricity, and it's also the one where probably the most new technology was available. And when you look at a 100-watt incandescent light bulb now being able to be replaced with a 10 to 12-watt you know, LED light, and it can do the same thing you need it to do. There wasn't a lot of rocket science involved there. It was pretty much a no-brainer to do that first. Thank you, John. This has really been very interesting and very informative. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you, Shannon. Thanks a lot.